Hello everyone. Today's presentation is not a usual one. It's about problems, but it's not about how to avoid them. It's not about how to solve them. It's about how to appreciate their existence. First, problems can be related to other things that need to be questioned. Sometimes when someone passes through a problem, the first question is, is life fair? This is something that needs to be answered today. There is a nice quote for Einstein. He says that, it's not that I'm so smart, it's just I stay with problems longer. First, to understand problems, there are three types of problems. The first one is problems you cause. This is the type you cause by your mistakes, by your wrong choices, by what you do in life. And this is the most valuable one. Because this is the one that teach you, this is one, the one that maybe make your uh, weaknesses visible for you to be able to change them. This is the one that can make you improve. The second type is problems because of who you are. This type could be because of your nationality, because of your color, your skin tone, because of things that are not related to you. So this type could be the one that doesn't teach, but that can hurt. This is the hard part of it. And even though this part doesn't relate to what you did, but everyone passes through this in a certain type or a certain time. The third type, everyone for sure passes through it because everyone passes through random problems, which is the problems that come to you randomly. First, maybe to go to a personal story. In the high school, usually in the country that I was, they give the top student at the high school a full scholarship to the best university in the Middle East. And when I was in the high school, I was the top student for three years. So when I graduated from the high school, I took the full scholarship and I was accepted in the engineering domain. But the rest was just to do an entrance exam and to go to the university. I got the scholarship, I just did the entrance exam, which is the SAT exam. I did great in math, but I failed in English. Did it a second time third time, fourth time, and fifth time. All of them I failed in English. So I lost the scholarship because of this problem. What is the reason? I was bad in English. Does it reflect that life is not fair? No, life is fair at this stage. You was bad in English, you didn't prepare well, so you lost it. You lost the scholarship because of this reason. So the next point is whether you stop or you continue. For sure I wanted to continue, so I went to another university, but now it was even harder because you need to be the top student at the whole university to take this scholarship, to be able to continue. Out of 200 students, I also was the top student. I took the full scholarship, but now I know my problem. I was bad in this language, so I need to improve. I studied English for two years, I communicated with natives, I did everything that could be done, and I improved in English. After three years, after a lot of hard work, I got even a more competitive scholarship. It's Erasmus, I'm not sure if any of you know it. Out of 11 countries in the Middle East, they will take only 13 students. It's much more competitive. I just wanted to apply to try. Out of 13 students, I was ranked the third. I got the full scholarship and the full funding. Not only this, but also I got an offer for a research position with the best researcher in this university, which is the University of Minho in Portugal. I got a six months contract of research with them. It was a great opportunity for sure. And a full funding. You, need, you don't need to work, don't need to do anything, just to study and to do research. So the rest was to apply for the visa and to wait. I applied for the visa. It needs between two and three months. Even though because of my passport, I expected it to take more, so I applied earlier. I waited two months. Three months, no response. After four months, my visa got rejected. And the reason was clear in the email. Your passport isn't accepted by the Portuguese authorities. So as a Palestinian refugee in Lebanon, I don't have a Palestinian passport. I don't have a Lebanese passport. I do have a Palestinian travel document for uh, refugees. So this is not accepted by the Portuguese authorities. So at, at this stage, if you question, is life fair? I would say no. Do you want to stop? I don't want to stop, but it's hard to continue. So I learned to work with what I have. So instead of doing research in Portugal, I did research in my university. I started working with a PhD student for two years. After two years, I had a publication. And by coincidence, this publication got published in a Portuguese conference. I didn't go, but my research was able to go. 
So, if we'll end it here, for sure some problems happen for a reason, but sometimes it's hard to understand the reason. But both, both ways, those problems will for sure make you stronger. Another lesson that I have learned, and instead of applying for one thing, diversify your plans. Apply for more than, more than one thing. So, here comes story two. And instead of applying for one scholarship only, I applied for a scholarship and for a work position. A work position was at a multinational company, it was a great company, and a PhD position. This PhD position was in the USA. I did a few meetings with the professor, I got the funding, everything was going great. He told me, you just need to do the GRE exam. You do math and English. Now, I did great in both, but it will come. So, I booked the 10th of November for the exam, just three weeks before the deadline. It needs two weeks for the results to come and one week to apply for the university. For the job opportunity, it was also great. I did the first interview, I was shortlisted for the second interview, then I got the job. It was at a great multinational company. So, everything's fine. Life is fair, everything is great. Now, on the 10th of November, I was going to do, to do the exam. On the same day, I was previously sending the passport for the company, just to apply for the visa also. On the 10th of November, I got a call from the HR. The same day of the exam, he told me, what is the document that you have sent? I told him, this is my passport. He said, it is not really included in the system. I asked him, what does this mean? He told me that there is no way to apply for the visa if this is not included in the system. Unfortunately, your nationality is not included in the visa system for this country. Should I stop here? No. I have an exam on the same day. This was a few hours before the exam. I want to do the exam. When you finish the GRE, they will give you preliminary results. So I did the exam on the 10th of November. I got the preliminary results. The professor said for the admission you need 163 over 170. It's not easy, but it's doable. The preliminary results were 168. So, this is great. PhD was my priority, then I'll go for the PhD. There is no, way, no need even to think about the job. Now, you need to wait between 10 and 15 days to get the final results. I waited 10 days, which is a lot for me at this stage. Waited 11, 13, 14 days. No results. So, on the 14th day, which is the 24th of November, I called them. I just wanted to ask why I didn't get the results. I told them it's been 14 days. They said that you need to wait for the 15th, which is the final. Because of my experience with a lot of problems, I did ask, can you double check that there is no anything wrong? So I got a call for nearly half an hour, then they transferred me for another call for nearly 20 minutes, then another call for 20 minutes. They said that they doubt that there could be in the, a problem in the exam. So, they need six weeks to check the exam. I only had one week to apply for the admission before the deadline. I tried my best, but at this stage, there is nothing to be done. There is no way to apply. So, I lost the, uh, this scholarship also. What is the reason? I don't know. Is this related for something? I'm not sure. But at this stage, those two previous ones were not okay, but at least I passed them. This was the hardest. At, I felt that everything is personal, everything is for me to stop. And when I asked myself, do you want to stop? I said, yes, I do want to stop. I don't want to apply for scholarships, for jobs, nothing. It just needed 12 hours to rethink, to see if I stop, what will happen. If you stop, you wouldn't hurt anyone. You would hurt yourself. You wouldn't stop the future of anyone unless it is just about you. So. After finishing this stage, it's important to question one thing. Is life fair? I don't think so. But what should be done? Now, the thing that should be done for, for sure is to even more diversify your plan. Instead of one scholarship, ten. Instead of one job, five. And sometimes the acceptance stages come. After the first problem, second problem, third problem, even fourth, fifth, tenth. Acceptance stage will come if you try. So I applied for 10 scholarships and I got accepted in most of them. I got accepted for a fully funded PhD program at the University of Bristol, which is one of the best in the UK. Also for the Netherlands, 
three different scholarships in, in France, the best university in the UAE, not only this, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Belgium, and Poland. I also got accepted in five dif different companies. I worked on multinational companies. I designed buildings in Lebanon, in Saudi Arabia, in Qatar, in, in Africa, in the USA, and all of this at the age of 22. I have been part of the main and the biggest program and the biggest project worldwide, which is NEOM. It's the most sustainable project. Everything happened fast, but sometimes when you stop, you would, wouldn't hurt anyone un unless it is yourself. And for sure, after waiting, I got the result, which, one, which was 168, but it wasn't beneficial. We're back to the, to the main question. Is life fair? There is a nice quote for David Brenn. He says that life is not fair. Anyone who says it is, or even it ought to be, is a fool or worse. There is a nice research that was done in the USA. It says that being one inch taller can increase your salary by nearly $800 a year. It looks weird for sure, but sometimes being taller, having a certain eye color, a certain skin tone, a certain language, a certain religion can increase your chances of being accepted. But what you should do at this stage? If you have less chances, you need to work harder. Is it fair to work harder for equal chances? For sure, no. But it's your only way to change things. So let's talk about minorities. What minorities want? For sure, I want first to send a few messages to minorities. I, I am part of minority, but from my experience, I want to send a message which is even if you had a ton of reasons to stop of reasons to take them as excuses. Sometimes a visa rejection can be taken as an excuse. Sometimes a rejection because of uh, your language, your skin tone, anything can be taken, an, uh, taken as an excuse. Don't take them. Work harder and change what needs to be changed. Not only this, but being part of minority is not something to be hidden. It's not something to be ashamed of. It is something that makes you special, that make you, makes you shine in the crowd. So take your special thing and be vocal. So some people can say that holding this passport can make a lot of problems, and this is true. But holding this passport is the thing that made me stronger, is the thing that made me more work harder, and is the thing that makes me special. This is the Palestinian passport, and I'm really proud of holding this passport, even though it made a lot of problems. But this is not the problem of the passport. This is the problem of somehow the system that judges those things. So, other thing, just about problems. After every problem, you have one of two choices. Either to stop or to work harder and work harder. And to finish this story, it is not fair to finish it by just saying my, about myself, I should for sure say that having a supportive family, having supportive friends can change a lot. Not only this, but also I should highlight the role of some NGOs that do help minorities. For example, in Lebanon, as a Palestinian refugee, those NGOs did help a lot and did help more than 10,000 of students to acquire education at the best universities. ULIP, Mahmoud Abbas Foundation, Ta'awun, and Palestinian Students Fund. I would encourage each and every one of you to look at their programs, to read about them, and to consider donating. Not only this, and not only in Lebanon, but read in your countries, read in countries that include minorities, and consider helping and donating and even understanding the case. Thank you so much for listening.